Welcome back to Super Mario 64 DS. Last time I did some of the Thwomp's Fortress, and this time, I'll be moving on and doing something a little bit different. I'll come back to Thwomp's Fortress in just a second, but there's a place I want to visit, and after that, a place I want to revisit. Because you'll notice, if you walk into the main room, there's a light shining down from above. If you press X and look into the light, Welcome to the question mark switches of Rainbow Tower. Step on the question mark switch at the top, inside the rainbow ring. When you trigger the switch, all of the question mark blocks you will find become solid. You'll have to hit them to see what's inside. So, this is another secret level. I think I messed it up already. Did I mess it up already? Hold on, let me make sure. There is a red coin mission here as well as something I can unlock. Obviously, since I'm doing 100%, I'm going to do the red coin mission as well. I remember this being really, really difficult as a child, but over the course of time, it's gotten much, much easier. The red coin mission isn't super hard. You just have to take it really slow. And, you know, maybe I wasn't the most... I, I didn't use the flying controls to the best of my ability when I was a child, I guess. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, 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 okay. So the issue with the flying is that I will consistently lose height and it's really, really hard to make a tight turn. So I think I messed this up. I'm not gonna try to get the red coin just yet. I'm actually going to do the question mark switch and then I'll grab the red coin. But if you step on the switch, you stepped on the question mark switch. The question mark blocks have become solid. Hit them to see what comes out. Do you wanna save? No. But we are currently using, <laughs> I completely forgot to mention, I was talking about this and then I just, it, it just flew right over my head. We have the wing cap now. With wings on his cap, Mario can jump to the skies, triple jump to take off and crouch to land. In standard mode, press the uh, D-pad, I almost said analog stick again, my bad. Uh, the D-pad up to descend and down to ascend. Ready for takeoff? And that's pretty much it. So obviously I cannot get the red coins just yet, they are really high up, so I'm just going to kind of get out of here. Let's try that one more time. And we're right back in. This time, hopefully, I won't suck a lot. So, I might as well explain the controls of the wing cap real quick, because right now, all you're seeing me doing is some very slow movement, and this isn't the flying controls of this game in general. It is a little bit more exciting than that, but uh, for the red coin mission, it's just best to do this and take it slow. Now, what you can do is, if you dive down, straight down with wing cap, or dive down a little bit with the wing cap, you will gain a lot of acceleration. Then, if you pull back on the analog stick or D-pad, depending on what you're playing on, Mario will dive, or go straight up in the sky. And that will gain him, I don't think any height, but it does help in some situations. The wing cap controls are a little funky. By the way, that mission I just did while talking, I used to think that was incredibly difficult. But the wing cap controls I used to think were really, really funky, they're really not, you just have to get used to them. And I never took the time out of my day to actually get used to them when I was younger, so that was probably my issue. Uh, it's really, really fun, and I'm going to explain them a little bit more when we go back to a previous mission. There was something in bob Battlefield called wing Mario Wings to the Sky, and if you can put two and two together, yeah, we're going to be using the wing, wing cap here. So I finally unlocked it, and I can finally get this last mission out of the way. Let's go do it. There was an invisible red block over here that, uh, you know, originally was, again, invisible. But now it's full. Now it's filled to the brim. So there's a, a little more intricacy with the, with the wing cap than what I was explaining. Um, I did a really brief overview of it. I'm not going to go super in-depth into the controls of it, because um, I don't really have to use the wing cap all that much. But something that is important to note, and I do want to mention, is uh, you can land right on the side of the mountain and break your neck. That's definitely an important thing to mention, but you can also, after being shot out of a cannon, go straight into flight. The wing cap is an insanely fun thing to mess around with, and I'd recommend doing it in your own time, but for now, I'm good. Hello? I'm- Oh, I was pressing the A button trying to jump. Ugh, I don't know what's up with me, I guess. I'm a little funky today. I'm a little weird. But this area, this mission, is, is actually pretty easy. What you want to do is get the perfect shot with your wing cap, and fly through all of the rings, getting all the coins that are smack dab in the middle. I'm not very good at this mission, but it's really not that long. Uh, it's really not that crazy, and you can do it without the wing cap. 
if you hate yourself and you hate, you know, using your time effectively. Because um, you can just shoot through your cannon a million times and try to get all the coins. Uh, but the wing cap makes it, again, significantly easier. You don't have to shoot through the cannon to get back up the island again, because you can just fly right on back. And also, on the way... Ooh, this is bad. So I just kind of ran out of my wing cap. The wing cap is on a time limit. And... I kind of need that to fly back. I need to keep that in mind. Every single time I go back to that island, I need to grab the wing cap again. Uh, I forgot to mention that, again, it is on a timer, and that's, that's quite important. Um, but... Ah, I guess I just completely forgot about it. I, I'm not listening to the audio currently, so uh, my TV audio is really low, rather, I should say. Uh, so I'm not hearing the audio cues for when it's going to run out, so I have to pay attention to the visual cues when it starts blinking. So that makes this a little bit more difficult. You can't have the wing cap forever, which would be kind of overpowered, but you can have it for a decent amount of time. It doesn't, it doesn't like, disappear real quick. So... It's not a super big deal. Uh, there's only one coin I have to get left. Hopefully I can get this on kind of the return. Because something that does make this significantly easier with the wing cap is you can actually do that. On your way back, even if you miss with the cannon, you can still kind of turn around and alter your momentum to get the, uh, the last coin. So again, the wing cap just makes that significantly easier. You're meant to play it with the wing cap. Don't do it without it. I've gotten close to doing it without it before. It's not worth it. And that is Babam Battlefield completely done. The 100 coin star, pretty much everything. So I'm going to hop straight back into Thwomp's Fortress because I still need to finish that up. Um, is it Womp's Fortress or Thwomp's Fortress? I believe it's Thwomp's Fortress. I always kind of get the two confused because Womp and Thwomp, they're, you know, obviously different enemies, but they're obviously of the same species or something along those lines. So I kind of mix them up. It's Womp's Fortress, not Thwomp's Fortress. Womp's Fortress, which would make sense since it's King Womp and not King Thwomp, but anyway, moving on. Fall onto the caged island. This is another star I had a few problems with when I was younger. So there's a cage really high up there. Um, I can actually show it off because I remember that X allows you to go into a first person view, which isn't super helpful all the time, but right up there to my left, you'll notice that there is a, an island with a cage on it. Now, I don't know if there's actually a wing cap in this stage. I don't think there is, but what you are meant to do is climb into this tree and an owl will pop out. Who's there? Who woke me up? It's still daylight. I should be sleeping. Hey, as long as I'm awake, why don't you take a shot of flight with me? In standard mode, press B to hold on, release B to let go. I'll take you wherever you want to go. Kind of a lie, but mm, whatever. As long as my wings hold out. That's actually more accurate. I spoke too soon, I apologize, Owl. Watch my shadow and grab on. So, this owl is a little interesting. If you jump right into him, he will fly straight up into the sky with a sudden burst of speed. And then, he will take you around. The controls of this are slightly awkward, and he continuously descends, so it's not super useful. But, it's definitely not bad. Now, this island was very... Remember that time I talked about slopes, and how they can be a little awkward? Great. <laughs> that was fantastic. Anyway, going back to what I was saying, the cage in this version of the game is slightly changed from the cage in the N64 version. Uh, it's a little bit easier to land on it, because in the N64 version, it was like actually a cage surrounding the entirety of the island. And that made things a little bit more difficult to aim, but really not too difficult. I'm gonna cut to where I stop being an absolute idiot and stop pressing buttons I don't mean to, or rather letting go of buttons I don't mean to. Alright, this should be a decent angle. So, here we go. Yep, there we go. This was a little bit more difficult, it was a smaller island, the cage was a little bit more constricting in the N64 version, but in this version it's a little bit easier. Either way, it's not super bad, it doesn't take too long, unless you're an idiot like me who messed up 5,000 times, but uh, so let's not talk about that, let's keep that a little bit secret, a little bit on the down low if you will. But anyway, hopping right back in, welcome to one of the stupidest missions in the game, Blast Away the Wall. Why do I think this mission is stupid? Well, first of all, it's extremely short, so it's really not that interesting. 
Uh, that is one of my... I've already talked about that. A lot of the missions in Mario 64 were, like, really, really short and not super interesting. They removed some of those in the DS version of the game, obviously. But uh, this one somehow remained in the game. I don't know why. Now, there's a wall right over there. The corner of this wall looks pretty normal, right? As it should. It's just a wall. But if you pay very close attention, you'll notice that that level geometry is actually separate from the other part of the wall. The wall breaks open, and a star comes out. What would make you think that that would be where the star is? Literally what? There's nothing I can think of that would actually make me think, yeah, seems about right, that seems like where the star would pop out of. It doesn't make any sense to me, and this is kind of like a, you have to have a guide to make it even remotely fun type of star. It's just shooting into the abyss until you somehow land in a wall and it breaks open for no godforsaken reason and there's no hint whatsoever to my knowledge that shows that that would be there. It's a really dumb star and I hate it a lot, but uh, enough of a negative Nancy, because that's what I'm being, I don't want to be that the whole time. But there is one last star minus the 100 coin star, which I'm going to do next episode, I'm not doing it now, uh, but there's one more star in Thwomp's Fortress. I almost said Thwomp's Fortress again, stop it, bad boy. Switch star of the fortress. This one is a little bit more fun and it's a little bit more interesting. It actually uses the area that was not available, or wasn't actually an area until the DS version of the game. Again, this was not in the DS version, but it's in the- or this wasn't in the N64 version rather, but it's in the DS version now. And I actually might as well show this off. This is a big mushroom, mega mushroom, whatever you want to call it. I'm really not quite sure what it's called. I guess I'll put the official name on screen right now. But if you've ever played New Super Mario Bros. DS, the minigames are not the only things that are shared between these two games. There's also this. This really, really cool mushroom. It's a cool addition. They add a few different power-ups to Mario 64 DS to make it feel like a more complete experience. And that is one of them. I absolutely love the mega mushroom. It's not used too often, which is a shame. But, it is a cool idea, it's a cool concept, you can break everything in your path, and similarly to New Super Mario Bros. DS, there's that whole, oh, well you get 1-ups depending on how much stuff you absolutely destroy. And uh, I love that concept, I think the Mega Mushroom is actually really cool, some people don't like it, they think it's lame, and I think those people are lame. So, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. But that was a Switch star. It was pretty easy, we've already done one of those before, it was just a little bit more platforming, it was a little bit more interesting. I enjoy it a little bit more. But, with that being done, we have done quite a few stars, actually, and we're not even close to being done with the first floor. We are 20 stars in, I would say 100 stars more if we were playing the, D or the N64 version of the game, but there's actually 150, I believe, in the DS version. So, uh, not quite there yet, but eventually, eventually. Anyway, next time on Super Mario 64 DS, I'll hop back into Womp's Fortress. I got the name right that time, thank God. And I'll do the 100 coin star, and I'll most likely start on another level. But again, that's for next time. Until then.